Be with the bros and you know we be modern. Had the katas in December, we tried it. Welcome back to another episode of A Day in a Sports Life with my special guest, Zay. How you doing, Zay? Doing good, good. How are you? Doing pretty well, man. We got here right now a special guest, a former athlete for the Hobart and Lewisville College Statesman, a former running back. And right now, your current occupation, you're a director, direct support coordinator? Yes, 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 yes. Wow. What does that entail, that position? So in layman's terms, uh, I work with special needs adults. So adults that have autism on various scales. I'm talking about <clears throat> adults that can communicate for themselves, some that can't, some that only can speak or communicate through sign language. Uh, a lot of them have like, when I say different types of autism, I'm talking about we have uh, our generic autism where they're just like they don't they're not capable of expressing themselves to their complete ability. And then for like some direct ones, you have like fragile X syndrome, which means that they are born with an extra chromosome. So which details behind that is more or less like they're built. They're born with like a bigger head, more heavier set. They can't really express their emotions. So the way they, they can express their emotions is usually through crying or screaming or an outlet. And my job is I create schedules, but more or less I follow a whole group of themes throughout my entire week, which also is throughout an entire month of scheduling to so they can always live their normal life. But it's more or less so they are prepared for when they're not with me or not with their parents. It's so that, that they're capable of taking care of themselves as a normal adult capable of, but obviously with certain restrictions, like a lot of these clients can't cook for themselves. So use, teaching them how to use a microwave or teaching them how to just boil water to like make simple things like tea or soup. Yes. No, I definitely understand that. Now, what made you get into this, this craft? honestly i feel as if this craft fell into my lap more or less than like what i pursued into it because i've always wanted to go into a career of helping people so i guess public service but i never thought i would be here i more or less i've always wanted to be a part of the physical therapy room which is well i still is my main goal as i'm working now i still want to go back to school and finish up my uh, PT undergrad and actually I have to get my doctors for PT. So I want to go back and do that. So, well, I was taking a break, obviously, you know, pandemic happened 2020 yeah. and I was a little bit lost because there wasn't a lot of places for people like me to go. People that are really hands-on and for physical therapy, you're really in person. It's not, it's rarely done over the screen, you know? So when that happened and um, trying to transition between, okay, I can't really be outside, but I still want to help people. How do I do this? I That's where my current girlfriend happened to, and also her sister who is special needs, actually helped me find this job because she worked there. And it was actually a crazy funny story. Like I walked in there one day just honestly uh, coming back from college, like you said, Hobart William Smith. And I wasn't even looking for a job at the time. I was just still focusing on football and be being an athlete and focusing on my studies and going there to pick her up one day from work, just as a surprise, I got pulled in to a conference meeting that actually my current boss now, but back then all the bosses were in a meeting talking about budgeting and you know, me being my casual Isaiah self, just very talkative. I was talking to a supervisor as she asked me what I go to school for. And I told her PT, but right now, like I'm writing a rhetoric major with a biology minor, or I might switch that minor to aesthetics because I've done a lot of school, school, school work in a bunch of different areas. Uh -huh. And, you know, just, just chatting it up, chopping it up. And she liked my vibe. She liked how I was able to communicate and convey myself. So she was like, one second interrupted the entire group meeting with all the CEOs and the bosses and says, hey, I know you guys 
are in something really important, but you need to talk to this kid. And I'm talking about, I looked raggedy, like uh, hair not done in sweatpants and sweatshirt. Honestly, my sweatshirt that I was wearing that day had a little hole in it. Like I was not looking presentable, <laughs> but I went in there, told him my name, like proud chess, gave him my spiel about who I am, what I do, what I want to do for a living. And honestly, they, they ran with it. They loved, they loved it. They loved to hear it. Like I'm talking about, I've never seen these people. I'm talking about like a room of executives with me. And basically, like my, my my underwear, like I'm not like I'm not wearing anything. Like I'm not, I, suit and tie. Like where's my suit and tie? But you, you're and, a very approachable person, though. So I'm pretty sure they they seen your energy and that it rubbed off on them. It's like we had we got to have that type of personality around our our students. I hope I, I guess like I, I still to this day I wonder what they saw in me because I I just felt I just felt as if like. One, like, one people, people could be like, oh, it's an act of God, or it's just like, oh, it's Isaiah, it's you being you. But like, honestly, I'm just very thankful for, like, that opportunity just literally falling in my lap and, like, me being at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Man, I commend you for, for your work that you do. Now, do you, do you see that a lot of the different, I guess, new new skills that you're, you're picking up in this craft right here, in this occupation, does it, does it translate over with you being a sports athlete? Are you, you taking some of the things that you learned from being an athlete, being a team player, and translating some of those crafts and those skills over to your profession right now? Oh, that's a good one. Mm, I feel as if it's a little bit of both because I would say before working this job, I didn't have a lot of patience. Even as an athlete, like patience is something that you need to understand. Like you need to have patience to understand that everything is not going to go your way. You have to always keep your head up in difficult situations. Like you can't get down on yourself. You have to be your 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 biggest motivator. But in in this job is like taking aspects of real life and sports, and I have to combine it and I have to learn how to approach people differently because each each one of my clients or each one of my adults that I work with I have to approach them differently. I can't speak to the same person the same way. But I would say the biggest thing or takeaway is patience because I thought I had great patience before working this job. Mm -hmm. After working this job, I understand that my patience was never built enough. So now, yes, I'm, I'm capable of like actually sitting down and like trying to listen to a person rather than talk over them or let them get their point across. And then not me tell them my point of view, but rather than just sit there and listen and just say, it's okay. It's fine. Yes. Like, no, I definitely understand that. And I mean, just being around you, for man, we we grew up in the same college, freshman year, playing on the same football team. You were definitely that friend who was that that confidant that you could speak with and just confide <laughs> to. And you you helped a lot of people out, man. You helped me out definitely. So I definitely appreciate it, you know, just being around you too. And we had a crazy experience, man, being on the same football team freshman year with home yeah. the colleges. Uh, I I want to bring it all the way back. To you, born in New Jersey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What part of New Jersey? North Jersey, Garfield. North Jersey, Garfield. Let's take it all the way back to the early two thousands. I want to know, like, what got you into being an athlete as a child? What motivated you to get into becoming an athlete? I would say there's a couple things. So, first person, of course, that got me into sports i would say is my father because obviously he's my coach so but i wouldn't say he's like one of the prime motivators of why i play the sport like don't don't get me wrong now he is just definitely because like obviously like he got it he got me started with everything and like when i got to college he was really like the motivator to like keep going and like stay there because like obviously the situation but i would say person that like made me fall in love with sports and made me like really go out would be my sister Felicia is because and it's always because like oh it's always that like middle child like the middle child's like either the best at the sports or the worst at the sports and hey sh sh hey no no doubtably like she was the best at what she did when it came to running fast when it came to playing softball she could do everything hit the ball run the ball catch the ball throw the ball she, she jack of all trades came to basketball you couldn't stop her and then, like, like even with my oldest sister, like, all of us grew up 
playing basketball. So like our family was a basketball family, even though like, yeah, my dad played his sports. But my dad never played basketball in high school. My dad was a track and soccer athlete, but he was really good at basketball. He like he coached basketball for he coached literally my my oldest sister in high school through, through grammar school in high school and then coached my middle sister, Felicia, who I think is the person that pushed me the most. She he she taught her or coached her throughout grammar school and high school and a little bit into college for basketball and softball. And then and then honestly, my, my man's really came up one day and said, yo, Isaiah, you have too much energy. Guess what we're doing today? We're going to play football and you're going to get yeah. hit. And we're gonna <laughs> see all those kids take out all your energy because you're running through this house too many times. Wait, wait a second. Did he start you off with flag football or, or tackle football? All right. So he started me with flag football, but then like I would, he would see how I get so bored and disconnected because like all I grew up knowing was hit somebody yeah. or like be a <laughs> And so he he he'd see me on the flag football field get bored and just let my play, let my dude just run by me as like I'm slow trotting and he's like I say you're a lot faster than that what are you doing I'm like yeah but if I keep catching them dad it's gonna be boring mm-hmm. he's like okay <laughs> we have to change up the sport <laughs> like yeah like that next year he's like you're not playing flag anymore we're going straight to tackle and then literally like uh we pulled up to because I lived in Garfield we pulled up to Garfield GJB throwbacks like oh my god bleed purple all the time. Uh, we pulled up there and happened to be like one of his former, uh, friends was coaching the peewees, like the, the little kids. I remember maybe you're like, what, probably he's like seven years old at that time. He was coaching the peewees and I was six. So I needed to wait a whole year. But my dad said, yo, please take him. I can't wait a year because he's not having fun in flag because it's too easy for him. And I need someone to knock some sense into him to, to make sure it's not that easy. Show well, me that it's not that. Want the world to humble you? Yeah, ba- basically, my dad wanted the world to humble me, and the world did not humble me until high school. <laughs> like, not not like I guess I guess all of us at least at one time was like when we we're at least a little a little kid were that good at sports. Like at least at least the group around us could not keep up with us until like we got to that point of where oh, I met my match. Now everybody's equal. There's no there's nothing different about our circumstances how much we work out how much we train how much we practice and that didn't hit until like high school so yeah my, my dad honestly he wanted to tire me out he he, he said he said you have too much energy you're you gonna go get hit by some some kids your age and hopefully that's gonna knock some sense into you and then it backfired because i started knocking sense into other kids and i liked it <laughs> and, I yeah that. Now, the, so, yeah, the first I would say the first sport I played football then. But like I found my love in basketball, like literally the next season, because football was only for like, what, 16 weeks. Yes. Now, what was fascinating about playing both sports? What was, I guess, the differences and the comparisons between playing basketball and football? At that age, I would say it was being it was being able to trick myself mentally of being like different people. And what, what I mean by that is everybody has their favorite player. When I was playing basketball, I was Kobe. It didn't matter who didn't tell who, who told me that I was Kobe. It didn't matter. Next season when it was football, I was Emmett Smith. Mm. I was Barry. I was, I was in that backfield running the ball. If I was on defense, I was Dion. It didn't matter. If I was playing baseball, Derek Jeter, Derek I'm Jeter. out there. I'm out there with Derek Jeter. I had the two on my back and everything. Like, and like I, it was. It, mm-hmm. Hit a home run. Uh, I've hit only two home runs, and that's only when I got up to like, like what eighth grade. I I I didn't have a lot of power when it came to baseball. I was more like make some contact and use my speed. So it, it, it worked out. It worked out. Like if I got on the base, they knew I was coming home. It was just like literally. I think. What I had fun about those games when we were younger, it always felt like we were playing tag. Mm-hmm. And if it was playing tag, I was like, well, I just, oh, I just have to outrun somebody. I played baseball yeah. in my like summer camp when I was little. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like seven, seven years old to like 13 years old. But they had us playing <laughs> softball in my summer camp because they, they didn't want us to play with the actual, the actual ball. But, yeah, I don't know. That sport was hard to play, though. I'll be honest with you. I was getting striked all up. I was just, 
I was scared of the ball a little bit. Very because that ball hurt. <laughs> that <laughs> ball, I don't care. A ba- a football hit. Someone smacked me upside the head in basketball. I would take all those hits besides a baseball being thrown at me, and I have to. Only thing I could do is turn my back to it and mm-hmm. just take the con. No, I'd rather get out the way. Mm-mm. You want to hear something? So out in the sport of football, I'm a receiver. I play on the offensive side, so I try to score. But I realize about myself, like outside of the sport, I like to play defense in other like other different sports. Like baseball, I like to be an outfielder. Basketball. Mm-hmm. To be a defender, I like to call myself basically a defensive point guard, basically, and then um, just other sports like soccer. Even though I like to defend, but mm-hmm. it's such a weird dynamic to see outside of the sport of football the different positions I like to play. Like growing you up, know, you know exactly why because you like doing this after you run by them. <laughs> That's why you. This is up. I only got one chance to do it. You want to throw balloons up? With <laughs> he said, he said, deuces up with the balloons. I told myself my senior year, I was like, hey, hey, guess what I'm going to do? Because Tyreek Hill is one of my favorite players to watch growing up and being in high school. I was like, I want to model my game after Tyreek Hill. So, yeah, my boy. Year, oh my God. I had to throw the deuces up. I only got one chance to do it, but that definitely was um, a memorable moment for sure. Now, I want to talk to you about this specific. I guess technique. I want to talk to you about the art of juking. That's something that you specialize. Mm-hmm. You specialize in. I know you, you picked up that skill from middle school, high school. You cultivated it, and then you brought that skill to college. Now, tell me about the art of juking. Why that's? I guess one of the tech, one of the different things that you do in your arsenal that you specialize in. Man, I say you know the art of juking. Like, all right. So, like I said, I grew up watching all the old school. Football player. So Barry Emmett. I'm talking about uh what's his name? Be- uh Beatus, Jerome Beck Beatus. Like all these guys were big stocky that could run you over, but all had wiggle. Mm-hmm. You, you 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 couldn't contain them in a box. Right. And so me knowing that, hey, I'm a smaller guy. <laughs> I'm not that big, right? I used to catch them slipping. So <laughs> yo, yo, so yeah. I already knew, look, if I can't run over everybody, even though with as much determination I have, I have to make people miss. And so when I was younger, people used to say I look like a DJ because when I used to stop and cut, I used to have the worst stutter step when it came to cutting. You can time it, but it was a reaction step for me. It was never an actual juke. It was me setting up my feet to react for whichever way you went, mm-hmm. you know? So I would say, so they say I was, I look like a DJ because every time I, I ran or cut my hands would be like this, right? I'd be like this every time because I'm stuttering my feet. And if you <laughs> bite left, I'm going right. You bite right, I'm going left. Like it was, which way you want to go? Which way you want to go? Every single time. It didn't matter. Oh, it was worse to be a defender trying to. Protect. Yeah, it, it was annoying. I, I, I definitely believe it was very annoying trying to, trying to tackle me, but I didn't like understand like, how powerful a juke move was until high school and shout out to coach Coop running back training camp, my entire four years of high school. Like that's what made me the running back slash like slot receiver that I was, even though like some people like to say, I didn't have the best hands. I like to say if a quarterback put the ball on me, I don't drop it. Respect. Like, like respectfully, like I've dropped, I've dropped a couple of questionable balls, but like, come on, man. I'm only like 5'10". With cleats on, I'm barely six foot. Especially with pads, you throw that ball over my head, you're going to make me jump and do this? And I can barely do this? <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to catch it, sir. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to pray my hands to catch it. I'm throwing my hands up, trying to squeeze the ball, but, like, I don't know, sir. But, like, yeah, b- back to Coach Coop. Like, he had me, in, like, in the lab. 24 7 seven days a week and twice on sundays like yes like i'm talking about my my, my literally he sat me down after my freshman year because like freshman year i didn't play a lot uh, uh for my high school which was a discouraged like a discouragement part of me because like what i came from a town of which i ran i, I ran the town everyone knew my name boom all right everyone knew isaiah isaiah should be big isaiah should do this da 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 right now I leave my town to go to a different school, a Catholic school, 30 minutes away and not go to my public school, right? Oh, 
I should now be making a name for myself. That That's what I told myself. And that's a little bit what I heard around town. So I'm like, oh, bet. All right, let's make a name for yourself. You you did it here so you could do it there. Nothing's mm-hmm. changed. Just skill just skill has evolved, right? I'm, I'm, I'm working, doing all the work. I'm busting my butt throughout this whole freshman year. But what? I'm behind the coach's son. So in my head, I'm like, all right, Isaiah, look, you're used to being the coach's son. But even though as you were the coach's son, you knew you still have to work for everything. You can see this kid's not working for Jack. So what do you got to do? You got to be the bigger man. I got to grab some, some cojones and I got to put it to this man's, right? Yeah. So what did I, from from like, and once I realized that, I'm talking about, I didn't start like the first four games. In high school, we had 11 games. I didn't start the first four games. I only had two carries. I only had two carries my in my first four games of that year. So I was like, do you know what? I'm tired of this. I know I'm better than him, and I know I'm meaner than him. They, you, 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 you can tell people how, how, how my aggression gets. But I know I can do it. So I walk up in practice one day. We're hitting. I'm like, bet. Anytime that boy come up, I don't care. Offense or defense, I'm hitting him. So said, so done. Oklahoma drill. Irby, get in. I mean, I'm sorry. Sweeney, get in. Yo, who wants Sweeney? I got it, coach. First person coming up. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Yo, Sweeney, black. Who on? I got it, coach. All right, Oklahoma's. Who want? I got it, coach. It didn't matter. And every time, he was on his back. And what did I do after that? I got up and talked my stuff. This is the person you have starting? Really? Over me? Nah. Get up and let's run it again. He seems tired. I'm not. And I'm like, and like, I and usually I'm not usually that type of person. Only like, I I've seen like I see myself over the years when it came to like being really competitive in like football and basketball. I only get that way when I get really angry and fed up when I know something is not right, right? And so I hit that mentality hard freshman year once I saw that. And hey, it get, it got me my respect. Honestly, because after that, everybody everybody on the team was like backing down to him cuz oh, he's a coach's son. I was like, I don't care if he's a coach's son. At the end of the day, he's another football player. And he can get it too. Like it didn't matter. And once coach saw that and he saw that I didn't care, he was like, Oh, it looks like we gotta play Isaiah now. Yeah, you 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 gotta play Isaiah because Isaiah won it. Like I Isaiah 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 is 40 minutes from home, whereas all these other kids are 20 minutes. Isaiah has a uh, woke up at 5 30 in the morning to take a shower so his mom can drop him off at a friend's house and then drive back to Garfield to catch a what a seven o'clock bus ride to New York City to go make go make ends meet. This was while St. Joseph's? Yeah, while I was in St. Joseph's, bro, I woke up at 5 30 in the morning. Every, huh? Where's that school at? The actual um, Jersey, Montville, New Jersey. It's like it's it's really like close to like Nyack, New York, almost. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of city. Uh, kind, kind, kind of, kind of. It's like maybe like forty five minutes from the city, but like forty five minutes from like like uh New York City. But I'm talking about like upstate New York, like Albany. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 So, me waking up at the crack of dawn for my mom to take me to another person's house that we just became friends with because I'm in high school with her son. For her, and like ma- imagine me now after I get to their house, I fall asleep on their couch because I woke up at the crack of dawn. Mm-hmm. I take a nap on their couch for them to then take me with their two kids to school. And once I get to school, guess guess who's waiting there? Coach Coop. Coach Coop's right there waiting for me. And as those two kids went into went it went to school to take their nap or whatever at the lockers before class started. They, nah, I, I'm in the weight room. I'm in the weight room. At 7.15 in the morning, while class starts at 8.15, I'm in the weight room lifting, grinding, sweating, having my coach scream in my ear, do you want it that bad? I bet he does. Yeah. My coach smacking me with sticks. I'm talking about, bro, plastic, uh, what's it called? What do you, what do you call those? The, oh, the, the, the sticks that, the, uh, the pipeline sticks, the, you know, the, the plastic ones. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
You smack him with sticks, what just motivate you? You're physically abused. No, no, no. Like, like, like he like he's saying my problem was getting my feet up. Because okay. remember you I said I used to smack do the feet. little DJ, little DJ, yeah. yeah. He's saying I need my feet up. So my man's literally had me my one of my favorite workouts, but the hardest one. He had me do a uh, uh Frank, but he called it Fran. It's a crossfit exercise. So basically you you work up from I mean work down from 21, 15, and nine. And all you're doing is squat and press at a weight of 85 pounds. But you have to finish that in five minutes. Yeah. So you're going 21. So you're going, you're going 21 squat and press. Once you're done with that, you got 21 burpees. 15 squat and press. Mm -hmm. 15 burpees. Nine squat and press. Nine burpees. And you have to finish all that in under five minutes. If you don't finish, you run it back. You got to do it. it back. Oh. Exactly. So I'm talking about, I would, I, I've never yeah, finished. Until my junior year, that's how hard it was, and he threw me into that. He's like, "If you want it that bad, you got to show me." And like, and I proved it to him because I, I, I wasn't gonna say no because I did want it that bad. And going back to the sticks, then he put me on a on a treadmill. He had put on like a what, like an eight incline, but at like a three speed, had me start jogging right on an eight incline, just jogging, no shoes on, just socks or sometimes bare feet, just jogging right. on it. Right. And then he'll take the, the pipeline, whatever. And he'll just like swing it at my feet. I got to jump over as I'm on the treadmill. No he'll way. swing, it, like he'll swing it at my head. Not like, not maliciously swing it at my head. I got to duck under as I'm on the treadmill. He'll poke it at my stomach, get my stomach out the way, poke it at, poke it at my hip, get my hip out the way. This is all while I'm running, all while I'm running just to teach me how to maneuver my body as I'm running. So when it came to sophomore junior year, bro, there was a reason why I was one of the top three rushers in the Big North my year. I had over a thousand rushing yards both those years. So no cap, cap, cap. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Cap, cap, cap. I had a thousand rushing yards my my what's it called my senior year, my my junior year. I had around six hundred, and I was sharing time with our starter. Yeah, because he was a senior. So like yeah I'm I crazy Zay from freshman wasn't gonna try to out talk a senior I'm not that crazy he was big he got it um, <laughs> he got it <laughs> he got it you got it bro like <laughs> shout out Lou literally oh. um what's like yeah bro like that that was low key the grind like we created this thing called the running back training camp and it started from seven a.m. And it didn't end until like I'm talking about eight at night. Because mind you, football at football season, even though you have practice, even I had practice in the morning with him, I still had that football practice at the end. Mm -hmm. And what we start with, we started with those Franks again. Yep. We started with those Franks right right before 30 minutes before practice. We hit those Franks and we run in our hills. Oh, man. And then oh, and then when we got the individual period, we, 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 yo, this is the and honestly, this is the thing I think that made me the best running back or helped me become one of the best running backs mm -hmm. is when we worked out, we worked out on the, the grind, the dirty, the muddy. So my high school football field, we like, we practice on our game field, obviously like most high schools did if they only had one field. So, you know, how we split sections of like individual period, the offense on that side with the wide receivers and quarterbacks and the old line defense on the other side with the DBs, D line, all that, all the mm -hmm. spread, spread out. Right. Yes. You know how normally the running backs be next to the offense, but on the sideline, just like chilling, but like working out, trying to like squeeze in. Yeah. My coach said, you're not having none of that. My man's, we had a whole grass part on the backside of our turf, which was connected to the track that we had. Yeah. And we usually put like our track stuff during there for the season. Like we put like all the cones, all the hurdles, everything back there when we use them. So we don't have to put them back in the trailer. Coach said, come on, let's go. We pulled all the track stuff out. Moved it over. He said, we're going to use this. My man made obstacle courses. To obstacle and maneuver through? I'm talking about obstacle courses where you have to you have to crouch through. You have to, like, literally crouch through and run through full speed. Yeah. And he'll throw a, a stop and cut out, cut in and out, in and out, zigzag, icky shuffle through them. Then, yo, then this man's, like, and this is all on, a, I'm talking about we had a grass field. By the, by the end of the two years, before my senior year, we turned that grass field into dirt. For how much cutting we were doing on that. It's just straight cut work, cut work, cut work, cut work. Then my man's grabbed the the jugs machine, have us running, shoot the jugs machine, catch the ball, run through the shoot, 
get low, back throw at us, cut off that, jump over a hurdle, get through another shoot, cut off that, run the circle through shoots and sprint 30 yards. Like, and I'm talking about, yo, our, our like, even our assistant coaches, our, our other coaches would look at us and be like, laugh at us, be like, yo, what the hell are they doing? Like, how's that going to transition to the game? Oh, it's going transition. Guess who they? Guess who the other team couldn't tackle? You. They, they couldn't tackle me. They like and like and like and the craziest thing is like they couldn't tackle me. And then like our starter running back, they were like, "Wait, why is even though he's bigger, obviously, so he's our pound guy, but like, why is he getting stopped?" Oh, and, and Isaiah is just getting squeaked through like these little ass bursts, and then he's just going right and like still gaining 10, 15 yards, right? Well, how is this possible? Oh, they sent him down there with us for two weeks. Didn't get stopped anymore. I'm talking about big man sque- just squeezing through little holes that you're not seeing. Him stopping yeah. on a dime in somebody like he's hitting people with moves that he's never that you never seen him produce before. Yes. And that's oh, that's only because Coach Coop allowed us literally to open our brain. He didn't tell us, okay, we're gonna come here, run to a coat, run to a cone, jump stop, hard cut, pivot, and like and just keep moving. Right? He yeah. said, look, you're gonna run through this maze and get through as fast as possible. And if you touch a cone, hit something, you're going to redo it. Yo, and we did that repetitiously, repetitiously. Like, that became our little home. Like, we called it the RTB, literally. Like, that's what made the iconic, uh, oh, jukes. Like, made me understand, oh, if I push off my left and act like I'm about to jump, and I hold that jump for a second, I stop, oh, you, you, you're going to bite so hard. And if you bite and I come back with a left, you're, you're already discombobulated because you're like, oh, man, I bit, but he's not there. Let me recover. Ooh, mm-hmm. I caught you in recovery. Oh. I caught you already. Me? It's, 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 a, it's a mind game of chess, and it's it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I, I love the art of juking, man. I wasn't the best at it, but I, every single time I had an opportunity to juke somebody out, I definitely press B. I definitely, <laughs> I definitely hit that button. I was like, oh, I see it. <laughs> I don't know. Now, now, see, uh, you... You were really good at like the one step. Me, I'm not good with the one step because you're so used to full speed. Oh, I'm uh, well, uh, me. I'm more of a oh, I'm running full speed. Let me hit you with a slow step. Hit you with a fast step, mm-hmm. or I'm running full speed, double fast step. I blow by you, or I'll stutter real quick and slow you, slow your feet, and I'm I'm bursting. Like my my mine is like more of like oh let me let me cat mouse you. You're like bye. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I see I see the angle. I see the alley I can run through. I yeah, now, exactly. From from high school, we then transitioned to college. We got the Hobart. We became a statesman. And there was a big difference between being a high school running back to being a uh, a collegiate running back. And our coaches, they had a specific like running back archetype that they wanted in their backfield. And it probably didn't represent what we were as as athletes, as a receiver or running back. Yeah. So you, what was what was the difference between like playing against, I guess, college football players on defense and trying to prepare yourself and um, to go against those type of uh, players? I feel as if when it came to this portion, I feel as if nothing changed because I already I already walked into with that mindset of all right. Football's still football, just dudes got bigger and faster, right? Yeah. So I got bigger and faster. So now I just have to test the waters. I have to see what works, what doesn't work. So now with our team having their own like demographic and how Coach built the team, he didn't build it for the players he had. He built it for how he wanted to play. Or at least that, that's what it looked like to me. Because I'm just saying, in my eyes, I would have used a lot of different players differently based on how, based on their strengths, basically. Because I feel as if, if you got two of the fastest wide receivers in the conference, why not exploit that? True. It, it, even if you have one of the toughest and biggest running backs in the conference, run him the ball, run him the ball, run him the ball. Hey, we're going to run him the ball. Psych over your head. Yeah, I don't you know we, we were too one dimensional. Yeah, but that's the sad thing because coach was smart. Coach was very smart and methodical, but we beat ourselves. It was like 
it was like we had a lot of the right pieces, but we didn't use them appropriately, which made our team look lesser than it was. Yes. And what, what was so different about it, he he wanted to run these like these bigger packages that favored our tight ends, our, our bigger power backs, instead of mm -hmm. speed packages that exploited our abilities. Me, you, Shaq. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had other receivers that we just weren't utilizing as well, too. So I just felt we were very conservative yeah. as a but, offensive team. Mm -hmm. I, I feel as if, especially because we had great packages, too. Like, we ran a, a nice spread offense. Mm -hmm. Like, our spread offense was nice. It was like, it, it was it like, the don't get me wrong, play calls when it came to, like, college play calling versus high school play calling, mm -hmm. a lot difficult. It's a lot, like, a lot more mental that you have to understand and know. Definitely. Very exactly. Good. Like, you have to, it's not like in high school where you can sit down for an hour with your coach in the room and they talk about it, but like, okay, bet we know it. Yeah, no, we, you don't have to go back to the room and like really, look at really the like write down the right yeah. head and know what happens. Cause like my man calls 42 Colts and then says, Green 80, you need to know what the hell you're doing. You know, yeah. like, like, there were so exa exactly many audibles in, in college. Dude, we used to wake up every Monday morning. Was it every Monday morning or Tuesday morning to go? Every, mo every to go Monday. Every Monday. Oh, my God. And learn new plays. He would implement new plays every now, day. I, that's the part that got me angry. We didn't use those plays. We never <laughs> used any new play. <laughs> this is crazy. He would sit there and be like, all right, guys, we're going to be um, implementing two new plays today. And they take two minutes to say. Take two minutes to say the entire play. We sitting there writing it down, trying to fill it in. We get to the practice field. We practicing it, yeah. We get to the game. We run no. the same old plays we did in training camp, At, bro. Like, like, like we we rarely ran Avalanche. Oh. Ran, we only ran Eagles. <laughs> we yeah, ran Eagles. Any of the plays, no. I don't. You can't ask me what we was running. I don't bro. know. I need to. Oh, play. you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Oh, but like six years out now. <laughs> Five years, bro. Probably dreaming about. Stuff, but... Bro, it's, it's in me. <laughs> yeah, that's great, though. That's good. Now, what was – as you transitioned through your, your freshman year to sophomore and junior year, just what were the difficulties of being an athlete in college? I know you've experienced some different injuries that you've had, and you faced a lot of adversity. I guess what kept motivating you to keep persevering through those injuries? I guess I wanted it that much. Like – when it came to at least not football, but when it comes to athletics, like I'm very competitive, and I I already like I already made the decision in high school. Like, look, when I was a junior high school, I had a couple offers, mm -hmm. not offers to like Hobart, but like I had a couple offers, and they were they were looking promising, they were looking good, and then I broke my wrist, like in a semifinals game my senior year, and like I seen all those offers just go away, so I'm like. Man, like, I, like, 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 okay, I get it. I could be a liability because I broke a, broke a bone or whatever. But, like, damn, man, like, still give a kid a chance. So, obviously, like, when Hobart gave me that chance with, uh, what's his name, Coach Drop, hell yeah, I ran with it because Coach Drop was a New Jersey boy, and we had a heart-to-heart, -heart and, and I fell for that. So, I was like, bet, let's do it. But then, obviously, like, when Coach Drop hit me with the phone call, like, yo, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to Wilkes. You can come with me if you would like. Or if not, like, I still think Hobart's a great fit for you. But, like, look, you still got my number. Don't worry. Right? Man, I should have, after first year, should have, like, yo, coach, coach, I need help. Yeah. Like, I should have hit him. Like, I need help. But that's where, like, my self-determination comes in because, heck, I already, cause I already thought to myself, hey, I did in high school, right? I wasn't going to transfer out of high school because I wasn't getting playing time. I was going to prove to a coach why I should be getting playing time and then turn the program around and be that difference maker. So in my head, it was, all right, look, I got you. I got Shaq. You are the only three or only two that I need. And if I can show the coach that I could be a difference maker, I know that's going to turn you boys up. That's correct. Because Shaq is already going to do his thing. You are already going to do your thing. But imagine if I'm doing my thing and then let me rah, rah, rah after yeah, our boy's gonna be like, oh, we got a bad man. Let's do our thing now, right? Yeah. Like, it, it, exactly. Cause cause you and Shaq were like right there already. You guys were already hand in hand, 
not say competing for a spot, but like, yeah, you guys were competing for a spot. You guys were going up against each other a little bit, but like you guys still had different uh like like you were Z, he was X, or he was oh, did I say that right? Or you were yeah. H. I was like, yeah. they moved me around. He was just exactly. he was a Z receiver. Which but, was but exactly you guys were doing y'all thing, but like it was it was enough to get y'all shown, but like I felt like if I, I when I like when I felt when I started doing my stuff when y'all saw then I when I come out the game I see you hit a play my like, bet day I see Shaq hit a play then my like, bet then I get back in I hit another play than you and then I start to see this momentum of us starting to hit plays after plays after plays and this is just in practice so I'm like coach you are you seeing this dynamic are you seeing your three are you yeah. are you seeing go off right now you know it's no, insane won't. man like. Uh- the best moment for me that I remember was most memorable was when me, you, Shaq, and even Lud too. So I went to high school, but we were all on the field at the same time. Like, yeah. Forestville. And it was like late third. I don't know. It was like late. It was like early fourth quarter. And we're just on mm-hmm. the same time. I just had a moment to just pause and look at it. Like, damn, look at us. See, you were locked so, in. I was focused on the play. I was like, yo, yeah. it's just me and <laughs> <laughs> You know, I had that. I'm like, I had I'm like that yo, crew, yo, crew, 42 hot, bro. 42 is hot. He is yeah, hot. 42 is hot. It was just something about the game. Like, I can mess up as many times as I wanted to during practice. But in the game, because my routine, I, I was – um my roommate, every single, like, pregame, every road trip we took was, like, was – um what's his name? Ray. I had Ray. Mm-hmm. I had Ray or I had De La Santi. And Ray was going there. Ray wouldn't say anything. He was locked in. He would just sit there on his phone. He'll go to sleep early, probably talk with his girlfriend. Same with Dallas. Mm-hmm. I'll be right there just studying the plays for like an hour 30 mm-hmm. the night before. And I'll ask Ray a couple of questions if I needed to and then go to sleep. And then by the time it was game time, I, I kind of just the, – the plays were just ingrained into my mind. So I yeah. – And just – I don't know. It was just something about being on the football field, being in the moment. You had the goosebumps, but you were just so locked in. You know, I, I was mm-hmm. able to enjoy it, but I dealt with some shoulder injuries. I dealt mm-hmm. with a wrist and a thumb injury. I think I broke my thumb during like the first week, and I had it tied. Yeah. I had it tied up for the entire season, so that was messing me up as a receiver. I didn't have that much confidence, but yeah, I remember that. I remember you had the, you had the tape on your hands all the time. Yeah, and yeah, that hurt. And every single time I get the first ball to come and make contact with it, I already feel it just thorp, and I'm like, ah, oh. yeah. I'm bound through that. But it was it was sophomore year, well not sophomore year, but it was the second semester spring when I realized I can keep going. I know if I continue to go, I'm gonna start my sophomore year. But I had to realize that I didn't mm-hmm. know as an individual. I didn't know what I wanted. All I know was football, and it was very distracting from the academic portion mm-hmm. of being a college student, being a, um, a student athlete. So I just had to figure out who I am as a student, and that's why I departed and went to become just a student and I had to retire. But I always think about it every single day, you know, like what it would have been, what type of career I could have had, what we could have all done together as a trio, as a as a, um, a quad. So I miss it. Bro, man. like I miss it a lot. Bro, what day? Those springs and those seasons, like when it was just me and Shaq, I promise you, I, I rarely talked to practice, bro. Like I only talked if Shaq was next to me. Mm-hmm. Like, but like, I was, I was literally just locked in because, like, what I had to, I had to, I had to fight for another spot, bro. Like, like it was, it was fun, but like, it wasn't fun anymore. Yeah. Like football's always fun when you're with your guys, and I felt as if like, coach put so many people against each other that we couldn't have like connections, even though that we were competing for a spot. Yeah. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, even in even in high school, like, even in high school. When I was the freshman, right, trying to, when I came up to varsity, right, or as a sophomore coming up to varsity, like, we all knew our roles. Like, look, I knew I wasn't going to take the starting spot from the from the senior because them dumb dumb three were fired. They, like, I knew that, so I understood. But yeah. like, but like, at, at but at the same time, they they were the ones they they were the ones being like, yo, look, pay attention because look, if I go down, you're the next person up, and them two still need you, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, like they, they, they were the seniors to talk me up, talk me up, talk me up. So then now, right, when we in our freshman year, we got the same seniors. Half, uh, who's a uh, Bobby? Like all, all, all those, all those guys talked. At least me talked me up. They're like, Yo, Zay, you're good. 
Don't worry about what Coach Guy said. Yo, you're you're faster. You're 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 smarter. You're you're quicker than half of us. Just play football the way you know how to play football best. And when I did that, it was working. It was working. But after those guys left, and we were the higher classmen, and Coach had like only one grade below us. Yeah. It just felt, he was like, "This is us." Just threw it out in the air, man. Like, I gotta say, like, though, all the work, all the work you just did, just down the like, like for, for, for what? One thing I could say, though, I would say, you know, Rayshon and, and Tim Denham, they was a, definitely a dynamic duo. That no. I feel like that was the one recruit, two recruiters that coach got right. To be honest, yeah. like bringing those two in, if he could have just found, and this is no offense to anybody, but if he could have just found the right quarterback to really command this team this was a playoff team every bro, year bro do you know how crazy it would be just think about it if you stayed and just how crazy it would have been denim Rashawn in the backfield them two stay in the backfield right mm-hmm. you throw me in the slot my natural position because yeah. my, my, my get, getting me the ball in space because it makes no sense putting me unless you're gonna put me in the backfield behind a spread it makes no sense to put me back there because what Rayshon and I are as fast as each other, but he's a hundred and freaking 95 pounds. Let me take my 175 pounds body to the slot and shake some linebackers. Right? Like, mm-hmm. let me take my mismatch. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, I got a disadvantage going up against a 300 pound lineman trying to run past him with his clothesline across my neck. Like, it's not going to work out, coach. I'm only so small. I can get small alert, but like, then I'm gonna be on the ground every time. Like, like, but back to what I'm saying, Ray Sean, Denim, me in the slot, you and Shaq on the outside with Mealy and LaBella to spell you, or yeah. or say for Corey Pelzer say, say, say Corey Pelzer say, you have Mealy to spell you and you have Corey Pelzer to spell Shaq. Yes. They're not shout out, shout out to LaBella. He's uh he's playing, I think, semi professional or professional in I, Italy. I peeped. I peeped. I, I peeped all yeah. that yesterday. I'm like, oh shit. I, it's always yeah. nice to see like the players that we played with that we grew up with continuing to play the sport that they love. So you know, shout exactly. out to Alex LaBella for continuing to to play. Facts, bro. Really happy for you. <laughs> just and it's just in in we'll just- it's interesting to see like where we all come to now in our lives. Some are still playing the sport. Mm-hmm. Some are just, you know, playing different sports too. Are you are you I guess participating in like intramural basketball or some form of small yeah. basketball league? Well kinda like right now I'm doing a men's league. I've been playing in like four or five men's leagues. Honestly, I just been training to get back to where I was because like you mentioned injuries before like through my ACL, my what junior spring? No, it was COVID. COVID spring. Um. Yeah, oh, I thought it was. No. I thought you got it was <laughs> junior. Yeah, junior year, which was COVID. Yeah, COVID spring. You're yeah, right. yeah. So COVID spring. Yeah, yeah. COVID spring. I tore my ACL. So well, I have two more years of eligibility. Mm-hmm. Technically, by NCAA, I don't even know if that like has a wait time. But basically, I don't think it does because if I remember. Our boy Heyman went to play professional baseball and still had two years of college and came back and played football. So, I, I believe I believe I still have two years of eligibility because I haven't played a collegiate sport in since. So, like honestly, right now I've just been trying to get my knee back because like I tore my ACL and I tore ninety nine percent of my meniscus, and mm. so like that that recovery was just in itself like dreadful and just a whole like mental gap like it was a mental like literally a mental oasis like i remember feeling everything but not being present so like it sucks to say because it feels like that time really just just, like washed by really fast because of like it felt it felt as if like you know like you're on top of the world because imagine like that was also like my year like coach finally started to be like yo yo zay i'm sorry i messed up you've been proving yourself for the last three years and you know, you're right. Like, like, cause my, cause, my, cause you remember freshman year when I got, when I got suspended for that game for a union. What was the reason? 
Uh, I cursed out coach because Hens has got bombed on twice, and I said, get him out of there. Why am I not in the game? You're freaking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> coach, coach, Phil. Yo, what, 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 yo, the crazy thing is, crazy, oh, crazy, crazy. I'm not going to put the name out there, but one of the coaches said, technically, I wasn't wrong what I said, but I probably shouldn't have said it in front of everybody. But I'm like, then what's the point? Like, if everyone can't hear it. If yeah. everybody know the answer, why why is it wrong what I said? It wasn't an atmosphere for us to actually call the coaches out. It was not. Yeah. It wasn't taken. It, it, it wasn't like what I was used to, whereas like we can like have a have a headbutt, but it's still a headbutt heart to heart. Like 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 understanding that I, it's coming from like my competitive attitude of wanting to win and loving this game. Not because not because I'm trying to disrespect you, coach. Like, coach, I wouldn't be playing for you if I didn't think you were at least a decent enough coach. Like, I would be elsewhere. You couldn't dispense, you know, constructive criticism towards these coaches at all. They can do it to us. They can apply yeah. it to us, but we can't apply it to them. All right. That's yeah. That was something yeah. that I dealt with with my coach, my receiver coach, Garvey. It was crazy. Yeah. I ran into Garvey last year, too, when I was doing sales. You know, we had a little just moment. I gave him a hug. I was like, damn, man. It's like, because, you know, it's not, there's always <laughs> up there for the coaches. You know, I respect the wall. I respect everybody. I respect Coach Green. Appreciate him for getting me where I am now. Just, which mm -hmm. was just recruiting me to come to that college. Everything else. Yeah, appreciate it. Facts. Everything else is us. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely, just you know, I commend them for what they do and continue to try to do it. But there was, there was just something that they missed. They, they didn't fully respect us and appreciate us, and found a way to mm -hmm. allow us to express ourselves on the football field. So yeah. And that's something that's, that's just creates the demise of this, this statesman team that they never can reach the playoffs is because they don't put their players in the right opportunities to succeed or yeah. they never recruit the right players to cultivate an actual winning culture. But mm -hmm. when it, you still got put, the, you said what? Yeah. I said, yeah, you still got to put the right pieces. Like, even though you have the, like, even if you have the right pieces, in at your disposal, you still gotta know where to put them. Mm -hmm. Cause like I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say our team was bad. I'm not gonna say the team before us was bad. Like and I'm not gonna say even the team after us that that what's it called? Because think about our our year, we still or like our group still won uh, a bowl game against Colgate. So mm -hmm. like our team wasn't that bad, but bro, there's no reason why we shouldn't we should not have been that play bowl game. We should have been in the, the playoffs. Yeah. There's no exception. The the year that I thought they had the best chance of making it to the playoffs was my senior year. Just watching that team mm -hmm. together. And there was the two games they played, which was Ithaca and Union, where they lost mm -hmm. those two games. Oh, the Union game, there was a specific play in the end of the fourth quarter. Alex Sabella, he missed, he missed time to jump, and he missed one of the balls late in the game. And we had to kick a field goal to tie it and go to overtime. And then we lost in overtime just because bad play calling and we couldn't count. Mm -hmm defensive side and then the Ithaca game was just one we had to climb out from back who's down 14-0 and then late in the game I don't know this coach likes to call the craziest plays ever he does a what a running back screen a running back screen right and I believe it was to Tim no it was to Rayshon Boswell and it was a fake it was a fake um right receiver smoke to the right side and then he turns around, and we have four linemen pulling to the left side to block for Boswell. And there was only three defenders. It was three defenders on Ithaca's side versus four big-ass linemen and Rayshon, who that's probably a touchdown. That's, that's just that easy. That's a walk-in. That's a walk-in touchdown. That's like, play the game. And what happens is when Krusen cocks the ball back and turns to the right to do the fake – he freaking, the ball slipped out of his hand and it just fell on the ground, fumble. So he snaps the ball and he's looking to do the fake and just somehow, I know he's nervous, the ball just slipped out of his hands. There's eight defenders on the right side of the field, three defenders on the left side. They got completely faked out with the wide receiver screen. Ball slipped out and now he's running around scrambling trying to pick it up. Game over. And he, that's just one of those plays that's a what if. What if we got that play? What if we was able to get the ball to Rayshon and see the fourth lineman versus three defenders 
It's literally five Hobar players versus three. That's an Oklahoma drill with no one back there. It's an Oklahoma drill. Two skinny ass DBs and a safety going up against four linemen. I tell you, bro, that, no. oh, that was one of the. Oh, you only dream about those plays. Those only that you only dream about them. Like to be that uh, wide open. I've seen it. I said, "Why the fuck is he? Oh, it's oh my god! He chopped the ball." I was like, there's no way this open. It was like a split second that you just all my imagination went everywhere. I was like, no way this is gonna happen. <laughs> and of course, the wall was sitting there like, no. <laughs> um, yo, imagine the speech in the locker room. Oh god, bro, you know, good ball. Hey uh-huh. man, hey man, we came here, we tried to execute, and Dumbo's just couldn't. <laughs> uh, Coach Duval is probably one of those coaches when he got home. He's like, what the fuck, man? Fuck, I can't do <laughs> shit right. Every time we play Union and in the, I can't get this shit right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, he hey the first the first game uh, sophomore year he left Ithaca's place losing thirty four zero. I know he was sitting there like how the fuck he ain't put no points on the board. Damn, this is yeah, bro. Like quarterback, is it me? What the fuck going on? Do I need to give the play the playbook to somebody else? Do I need to be the coach? I don't. Bro, know. I just want to sit like this. Wasn't dumb. He had smart play calls. He just didn't, yo, know, like, like at that point, low key, I'm making Tim the QB. They gonna think we were running it to the left, and then oh, screen pass, like oh. pitch it back, <laughs> like. You know, it was, it was you know, put it in secure hands. Uh, uh, we'll see. Wait, man. let me finish it. Uh, so yeah, basically, right now I'm just training for basketball to see, like, when I go. Uh, apply for school like if the school has a basketball team i'm hoping to maybe play there i have to see how that's gonna work with like work and everything but that's my ability now because like i'm trying to get back into what i used to be because naturally i'm a basketball player like football got me to college and i transformed my body to be an athlete because like even though like even my running back coach like coach coop shout out like he wouldn't say i'm a i'm a football player he he literally he he built me to be an athlete like i can do a lot of different things like I'm not just a football player, just just because I know how to contort my body to do football things of cutting, sprinting, jumping, like understanding body placement or timing or having that quick enough reaction time to know what to do with my body in space. Yeah, that that's because of him. But that's not because we worked out for football. He taught me how to be an athlete, which is why like now basketball is a lot easier than what it was when I was younger. Besides, obviously, still like moving to my right and jumping off my right. Still working on that, which is why I'm training, getting better. Like, I uh, like right now my max squat is 315. I haven't went over that yet. I'm still trying to get like my butt to my ankles because I, I haven't been able, like, I haven't been able to put like my butt to my ankles since the surgery. Yeah. Like, like basically on my ankles. Damn. Yeah, but like, yeah, like it's, it's only my right leg though. But like, I'm getting better. I'm getting uh, like I'm already below 90 degrees, and maybe I like. 120 130 but like i want to get to like another 15 degrees but that's a hard 15 degrees that's me stretching every day for 20 minutes on on just one body part yeah and it's demanding it's like a lot it's a lot of like after stretching then like i don't want to move for 20 minutes but i have to so it stays loose no i definitely respect yeah. that and basically you, you transitioning from you know just being an athlete in the moment like when you're in college you're playing football you transition that, that senior just to be just a student. I hated it. You hated it, but did it allow you to kind of it did allow you to figure out what you wanted to do? Like what did you Yeah. Do? I mean, it 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 helped me learn that I'm good at a lot of different things other than sports, but I hated not feeling like an athlete because an athlete has been my identity my entire life. Mm-hmm. No, I definitely have. and so you know, like losing that identity is a cult is like a little bit of a shell shock like it's like what am i actually good for because you know us we all had that dream to either play on that tv play in that super bowl play in that championship right yeah and only one percent of us get there like i thank god for me i've played in my lifetime in five or six championships in all of my sports so yeah i have five or six championships that matter to me not to anybody else, but like, yeah, not having one of those championships 
on national TV with me making a lot of money, my family seeing my name on the back of a jersey, mm -hmm. that hurts a little bit more. Because, like, what? We all had that dream. Yeah. So the identity part made me take a step back. But then, like, understanding that I have a lot more, like, traits or I can put a lot more efforts into different things other than being an athlete is what opened my mind. So like now I stream, I play like video games on Twitch. So like, that's a good thing. Like I, I've always been good at video games, but I never understood that. Oh yeah. If I take my time and I actually put work into it, I could be really good at video games. Mm -hmm. I can learn a lot about video, about certain video games that no, nobody knows. And I can give them insights, especially now, like, you know, TikTok and Instagram and all the social media pages, there's never a lack of information. And if my information is wrong, I can just back it up or I can find the right source of information. Like, thank you, Cheryl Forbes, you know, back yeah. up my sites. <laughs> yeah. So, but then other than that, I mean, like, I found that I'm really good with my hands, like, like playing like the piano. Like, I'm really good at building things. When do you start uh, playing the piano? I've played the, I've tried learning playing the piano when I was in grammar school because like I did like chamber singers and did, was in plays and arts and stuff like that. And so it was just like mainly just playing like chords, which is just three notes, put three notes together. It's one chord. And now like I've been under learning how to put three chords together or put a chord in a note and sim and make a play a simile of which is the same repetition. Yes. So didn't know that before. Like, and, but like, I like the fact that I get to sit down and now like, like search the web and like do all my research and like find out different things. So like, which is why I keep basketball in my life right now because I need that outlet of still competition, athletics, like me, somebody needs to beat me or I need to beat them, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause like, if I didn't have that, I honestly, my next thing would have been karate or, or uh, jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu, but my girlfriend wouldn't let me do that. Some form of martial arts. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, picked up, I picked up running five K's now. So I'm, I, I like to run now. That's my biggest thing. And that's, that's where I, like you said, you're a true competitor. I like to compete too. So when I run these five K's, that's like my moment to like compete again. You got so, asthma. Uh, uh, I, I definitely do. No, I definitely respect that, man. Now, just I want to I want to ask you, you know, one final question just to, for the audience. Just one for you to, to, to speak with the audience now. Now, in your journey to success, how important it was for you to stay positive and to be a role model for the people around you? Now, whether through your work and mentorship or other means, like you, you becoming a, a positive light for other people. OK, you might not like this answer then. Um, honestly. I never thought about being a positive, like, outlet. Like, yes, you might think I was a perfect or a good positive outlet because when I'm around the guys, like, I'm always uplifting. But I never thought of myself as, like, one of those people because I've always just learned, like, going back to high school, you get in, you go to work, you leave. That's how you pay the bills. You get in, you go to work, you leave. Like, all the stuff that happens in between just happens, right? That was honestly until I met Coach Gray. Yeah. Like at Hobart. Because like he was the one that honestly told me and told me that it's a lot easier to just what's it called? Um he said was I'm trying to get his exact words. Uh shout out to Coach Gray. <laughs> Yeah, I just fat. Shout out to Coach Gray. I'm so sad that he's leaving Hobart, but like I'm happy. I hope he does. Where's well. he going? Actually, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I I watched some of the video, but like I was at work, so I couldn't finish the whole thing. Oh. But oh wow, was it a resignation video? Yeah, yeah. But I think he says it's like a three part video. I think he says where he's going yeah. and everything on the on the what's it called uh one team page. Okay. But uh, yeah, Coach Gray sat down and told you me he's like multiple teams at what a six forty five <laughs> workout. Because, you know, we had those 515, the 645, and the sevens. You know, I hated it. It was like, it was at the 645 workout. And I came in one day, like, tired, but, like, tired because I was streaming all night. And, but, like, coach didn't know that. So, 
you know, bug eye boogers, wash my face right before. And like, I'm just slow to the get up. Usually like I'm really amped up, fired up, jumping around, talking, screaming. And that just wasn't my vibe that day. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't feel like I didn't have that much energy. Right. And coach Gray walks in and is like, Oh, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm like, I'm like, you good? Like, I'm worried about you. Like, no, I'm tired. Like, but I'm here to work. Like, I'm good. Like, don't worry. Like, I'm tired, but I'm here to work. Like, don't, don't worry. I'm good. He's like, okay, all right, we'll see, right? We go through our entire workout, and then, like, every, like everything felt the same. Like, our effort, our stamina, how we pushed each other felt the same. But my man came up to us after. He's like, yo, this is the worst workout of the week. And I looked at him like, huh? Coach, we all hit PRs. What, yeah. the, what are you <laughs> saying? Like, like, worst workout of the week. I'm like, why? He's like, the energy was flat. I'm like, only person that wasn't screaming was fucking me. I was the only person not screaming. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward a couple days forward, uh, uh, like two days, we have another 645. I'm not tired. I'm up. I'm amped. Jumping rope before, freaking running around the gym like a maniac. Y'all ready? Ah, uh, like our, our big breakdown, right? I hate doing 645 a.m. workouts. Bro, I hate those. Can't, can't. I can't go. Now I try to wake up to go do them. I can't do them. Like it's crazy. Um, so then after the whole workout, he's like, best workout, best workout of the month. I'm like, okay, boom. He pulls me over to the side. He's like, do you see the difference? I'm like, what do you mean, coach? He's like, do you see the difference between us having today the best workout of the month versus two days ago when we had the worst workout ever? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no. He's like, Isaiah, you're the difference. I'm like, coach, are you trying to be like, I'm the difference because like I wasn't the one like screaming. He's like, no, Isaiah, you are the difference. You need to understand and look at the people around you and look at how the room is evolving and how, what the vibe of the room is. And I'm like, yeah, I do that all the time. He's like, yeah, that's why you're the first one in the gym most of the time. Cause you like feeling the vibe of everything. I'm like, yeah, understood. He's like, the team is not gritty not fired up, not amped up, if you're not amped up. So I'm like, hold up, coach. So you're telling me if I have a bad day, the team's going to have a bad day? He's like, I'm not saying that, but look around you. If you're not if you're not in people's faces and getting on them, they're not pushing in themselves. If you're not loud and getting on yourself and, and just being a maniac, the team's not responding. Yes, everybody else is doing that, but they don't have the conviction you have. And once he told me, he's like, yo, Zay, you have the power to brighten a person's day or to make a person's day worse just by your attitude. And then once he told me that, like, it changed. Like, once he told me that sophomore year, it changed. I was like, oh, bet. Positive attitude. Always. Get up. <laughs> get in your face. I don't care if you don't like it. I'm going to get in your face. Right? Like, I didn't know I had that in me to, to round up people and to get us going. Yeah. Like, I honestly, most of the time I thought when I was doing that, I thought I was being annoying. And after me doing it, I thought in my head, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 what's the point? Yeah. Like, that's not you. You were, you look crazy right now. But I, di I didn't know that, like, teammates, partners, family members, friends, they need a person, not to say me, but they need a person like me. They need a person that can fire them up when they don't want to be fired up. They need a person that can get on them when they need them to get on them. But they need a person that can do all these things all from a place of love, not from a place of like, just get your ass up, you know? Yeah. And that's what I brought to the team. And I guess that, 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 that will be my message to, to the audience. Yo, if you're having a rough day, you're having a rough time, month, life, whatever's going on, focus on fixing your attitude before you fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Because your attitude will shape the problem. If you look at things as it's bad, it's always going to be bad and negative. But if you look at things as it's always a good day to get better, it's always going to be, it's, it's never going to be negative. Like, it's, it's like, oh, I got an F on a test. Okay, it's good. Guess what? I now I know I need to study more. Yep. Oh, my girlfriend broke up with me. It's good. That means I can get a new girlfriend that actually cares about me. Like, 
I lost a hundred bucks. It's okay. It's good. That's a hundred bucks. I will now save. <laughs> like, like it's like there, there's always a positive to it. And I didn't understand that until he opened my mind to it of bro. It's going to be ass. It's going to be hard. But at the end of the day, we all got to do it. So if you can help one person help yourself, because helping yourself will help the next person. Mm -hmm. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Coach Gray, bro. Like, my man, my, yo, that's why I love that man. It's like, that's why I love all, all my strength and conditioning coaches, undoubtedly, except Coach Coop, because he's my running back coach. But like, all, all the strength and conditioning coaches, I had great, great chemistry with them. Like, my high school one, Coach Nick, he, yo, he called me, he, 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 he called me what he called me. He called me, he called me Flappy Arms. He called me Flappy Arm Baby Boy. My first time, cause my first time in the weight room, I never been in the weight room, and I I walked out like, like this, cause I lift so much, I lift so much. He called me Flappy Arms <laughs> Baby Duck, like come on, bro. But we had the best connection for the next four years after me like failing so hard, and he saw yeah. that I came back and kept pushing. He's like, I like you, and don't get me wrong, he 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 will always give me shit. He will he for the next time I see him, he'll always give me shit. Hop, he could lift nothing the first time I see him. He's a small baby with his wappy wings, like he will always say that. But like, it's okay because I I've earned it. I've earned it, and I can say I've earned it because I put in the work. And I said it's gonna get ass, but it's okay. Everything in life's everything in life's not gonna be all peachy and the sunshines and rainbows. You gotta push through the hard stuff to get to the good stuff. No, I appreciate you for that. And, and listen to yourself. You sitting here saying you, know, you wasn't somebody like early on who wanted to motivate people or be that be that light, that beacon of hope. But here you are explaining what you've become and how you've grown into that, that role. Now, speaking to the audience, you know, what guidance or insights from your personal journey, like what you're explaining right now, you know, what is that, that final message that you would want to share for individuals striving to create their own success stories? What is that final message, that key message that you want to leave this audience out with? Um, I'd say... If you believe in yourself and you love yourself, you can do anything that's possible. Don't rush it. Take your time. But also believe in it. Because the only person you have is yourself and the only person that you can count on is yourself. So if you don't believe in yourself, who else is going to believe in you? True. That's a great man. Yeah. And always remember, no matter who or where they are, they can always get it. Always get some. Remember, we got a plate in front of us, and we put food on a plate. Mm -hmm. Always eating. Don't matter who the person is. Everybody can eat. Everybody can eat. You, everybody got to eat. That's the only way you're going to be successful. Because if you don't eat your plate, somebody going to eat your plate, and you're going to be mad when you come back to your plate and your plate empty. True. Respect that, man. I appreciate you coming on the show today, man, with the Day in Sports Life. Episode six. Thank you. Isaiah Hopkins. Hopkinson. Yo, thanks for having me, honestly. Yo, anytime. Like, what? I'll come back. Uh, I love talking to you. Love talking to fans. Mad fun. <laughs> I respect that, man. So we are going to wrap this up, y'all. I hope y'all have a nice weekend. hope y'all enjoy March Madness weekend going into next week. Hopefully Kentucky can, Kentucky can play. Go Kentucky! Yeah, go Kentucky. They're getting their they ass whooped right now. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, switch around, Kentucky. Go on, switch it. We going to see, man. Who you rooting for in this tournament? Kentucky, man. I, I I only go for two teams, Kentucky and Michigan. And Michigan not doing that well, so. They won. Kentucky. Okay. And, uh, no, Michigan State, but not Michigan. Like, Wolverines? Oh, you're Wolverines. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make the tournament. Yeah. Not, not doing that. Yeah, we're not doing that hot. Nah, I I've always been thinking in Kentucky fan. So, you know, Fab Fives. Uh. <laughs> said Fab Five. I respect that, man. Man, hey, Zay, man. You also have a nice weekend, bro. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. Thank you, bro. All right. Take care. Be good. Peace.